Hi, Fraser Beadle here from the Collab365 Academy. Uh, and I'm going to quickly demo this solution to you, which is how to automatically save email attachments uh, to a newly created SharePoint folder uh, when a new email arrives. Um, so you might want to do this for uh, just being organized for certain scenarios uh, that you get high volume email with attachments, or it might be the start or part uh, of a larger process of maybe uh, support ticket management as an example, uh, invoices maybe, invoices come in and you put them into a certain folder and then this might fire saving them into a certain location, which could also then trigger off all sorts of other automations that, that, that maybe notify people uh, um, uh, and maybe trigger, trigger other automations to solve other problems. Um, in this case, this demo is just going to take an email in, from an inbox. It's going to create a folder uh, to put the email and the email attachments in. It will then create a file that's a copy of the email and then go through each of the attachments and save those attachments into the folder. So how did we do this? Well, we start by creating a Power Automate cloud flow um, with the, the trigger of when a new email arrives. Uh, you may need to, you will need to, if you haven't already got a connection, uh, you'll need to enter the, a user's credentials uh, in order to have access to the relevant mailbox. Um, and then once you do, you're ready to go. So in this case, I'm monitoring the inbox, but you can select different folders from the mailbox. Um, so that might be useful in that you could be copying files from your inbox. And when you want to trigger this flow, you copy them into the folder that you've defined here. Um, and it will only therefore trigger when, when they go into that folder. Uh, and then you can use all these settings in here to restrict uh, when this flow will trigger uh, and when it won't. So as an example, I'm using the attachment save uh, string in my subject. Uh, filter so that uh, it will only trigger when that string is inside the, the subject. This is maybe not a real world example for this demo. Uh, the real world example might be more the word invoice or an agreed word as part of your process for the, when these emails arrived or the word ticket or something like that. You can also filter on importance. So you might agree that only high importance emails trigger this process and again it all depends on that your needs and your pro and your you know your business needs um and we're mostly interested in the attachments in this demo uh, so this only fires when there's an email with an attachment so that means it's an email coming in the inbox with that in the subject line any importance and only when it's got an attachment will this fire the other one i've just skipped over here is do I want to include attachments? So that means that the outputs from this trigger will include the attachments if we select yes there, which as we are interested in the attachments, that's good for us to do. But if you weren't interested in it, it would save on a bit of processing if you just select no. Um, and because we've selected yes, it means that further down here in these steps, I can refer to those attachments and do something with them, which in this case is going to create a copy and save it to a SharePoint location. Okay, so that's how we trigger it. Um, and what we're going to do first of all is initialize a file name variable. That file name variable, we want to give it a file name. This is going to be the file name of the copy of the email. So the file that gets created that is a copy of the email. What do we want to call it? So we want to try and make it something unique, um, something that makes sense. So I've used in here, and you could use anything. Um, I've used a concat function, um, and I've used the ID of the email, which won't mean anything to you, but will be unique. Um, and, and I've used the uh, format today's date um, to what year, year, month, month, DD. You may want to add the time in there to make it truly unique. Um, and you may also want to add something from the email itself, something from the from email or something from the subject. Um, but for the purposes of this, we are going to end up with a email ID and today's date format to give a, a unique reference. 
Uh, and then I'm going to also create the folder name variable. So this is the folder where anything we create now is going to get saved into. Um, and again, I've used the concat function here. Um, but what I've done in, in this case, let me hover over here so you can see, uh, I've used the subject of the trigger email and I've used the first 10 characters. Um, and then I've also added the year, year, month, month, day, day of today's date on the end uh, to give it nice, unique uh, values. Uh, one thing to be wary of using the subject is that subjects are often long, subjects often have spe special characters in, and subjects often have lots of spaces in. So if you're setting a folder name based on it, you do have to be careful. Um, in, in our case, I know that I'm only using uh, firing this when the subject has that uh, string in it, so it's much easier for me. Um, it's just something you need to think about when, you, when you're setting up your own process. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is create that folder. Uh, you're going to select your site address, uh, and I'm just putting it straight into the um, documents location. And I've already created a folder in there um, where we're going to put all of the, anything that comes through this flow will end up in that folder. Um, and so I've, I've, if you like, hard coded that location in here. So everything's going to go into Fraser's emails folder. And then what I've done in here, just to demonstrate, I could have set this inside the variable um, and then just put the variable here. I've basically hard coded a reference here and I'm saying e the word email dash and then the variable of the folder name to give us the name of that folder. Um, so you could, you can set things in here or you can set things in your, in your variable and it's just sometimes easier to work with variables if you're trying to do complex, uh, more complex um, formula in, in order to get the values from the different parts of the email. Um, so this is now going to create that folder. Um, and the next step for us, let me just close this, create the folder. The next step is we want to put a copy of the email that triggered this whole process into that folder um, and call it what we've set the file name variable to be. Um, so the trigger doesn't give you enough information to create a full copy of it. So you have to use the export email the Outlook export email action. And it's really simple. You need to put the message ID from the uh, trigger step and the two uh, value, the, the two email from the trigger step. Simple as, as selecting the dynamic content and finding the trigger step, which should be down here. Uh, there it is when a new email arrived. And we're using the message ID for the message ID field, of course, which is in here. Um, past it message id and the two field there and that's what set those real simple one and now the outputs from this gives us enough to create a copy of the email itself in a file so we're going to use the create file step again all the way through this process you're selecting the same site address however now where i want to create this file because i've already created a folder i can go and use the dynamic content of that create folder to get the path but one thing to be careful of here um, so if we go and look in the dynamic content for the create new folder step, there it is. There'll be a couple of paths that you can refer to, um, and it's the full path that you want. Um, uh, folder path and full path. Uh, if you, the folder path is the path to where the folder is, the one that you just created. The full path is including the folder name that you just created. So we want the full path because we want this file to go into that full path. There we go. Um, and again, just to demonstrate, you can hard code some things here. The file name I'm going to create, I'm going to prefix it with email dash, which I could have done further up uh, in the variable. Um, but I just wanted to demonstrate you could do it here. And I want to add uh, a file extension. If I didn't add that, the, the file name would just get created as, as um, as a file without an extension. So .eml, that means when I double click on it, you'll be able to see the email and I'll show you that a little later. And then it's just about defining what the body of this uh, file that we're creating needs to be. And that comes from the export email action. And, and there it is, look, export email select body, which is already selected. So now we're, what we're at position in now is we've created a folder in, if, if an email triggers it, we've created a folder in the SharePoint and we've created a file which is a copy of the email in the SharePoint. So the next step is to take the attachments from the trigger email, however many there are, and save a copy of each attachment into that same location. 
Um, so to do this, we're going to use this condition. Um, we're going to do a compare. We're going to use a formula to find out how many attachments there are effectively by using this length uh, uh, length function uh, to find out how long the, the body attachments are. So if I just click on it, you'll be able to see the formula here. Um, the, this is just simply selected within the length function. This is simply selected as one of the outputs of the trigger um, in the dynamic content, which will be further down here. Um, you have to see more. Attachments. There it is, attachments. Um, so this is just going to see the length of attachments. And if the length of the attachments is greater than zero, that means it's got more than one or more attachments. So then we can we can process it. As it happens, uh, this might be useful if you've got different conditions for different number of, of uh, attachments, or also if you've got emails coming through this process that don't have attachments at all. As it happens, we are only processing ones with attachments. Um, so we already know it's got attachments actually, but but it's a, it's a useful step if, if you want to process emails without attachments and process emails with attachments in the same flow. Um, so then we're going to now try and, as you can see here, we're going to loop through each of the attachments and create a file. One thing to note from this though, is the best way to create this in order to not end up with too many apply to each. I'm going to do it again. Let's delete it. Is you start with the action that you want to carry out within the apply to each um, and which in this case was create file um, we want the sharepoint create file there it is um, again you need to select the correct uh, um, site address um, and again we want the folder path but it's easier now because we created the folder up here we can use the dynamic content uh, go and find the create folder step there it is. And again, don't forget you want the full path. There we go. It's always further down than you think. There it is. And then we need uh, to get the file name and the content of that file uh, for the attachments. Now, at this point, we're going to go to dynamic content again. And I need to go to the, let me scroll down a little bit. I need to go to the trigger. Um, step which will be further down here there it is when a new email arrives and I want the file name to be the same name as it is on the attachment so I'm going to use the attachment name but when I select this and this happens a lot in Power Automate it will know that there can be more than one of those and in, in many cases that you know, might be two three four um, and so it will put it into an apply to each loop because there could be five of them there might only be one of them and therefore it set it up nicely for us um, apply to each for each attachment we're going to create a file uh, we're going to create a file in the folder location that we created earlier we're going to create it with a file name of, of the name it already has the file that the attachment and then we just need to make sure we get the content in so again dynamic content we're going to go down to the trigger step <clears throat> excuse me um, and there it's filtered on because it's the only one that works for this it's already filtered on for me so it makes it much easier and there we go. Um, and then we save our flow. Um, and we can now run this. And if we were to run this by sending an email, the outcome, and here's one I made earlier, by sending an email to the mailbox with that subject and with, say, three attachments, attach one, attach two, attach three, um, it would, because we hard coded that location, it was a location created in earlier phrases emails, it would create, this is one created earlier, a couple of days ago, a folder with the name as we defined it in the step and in the variable. It would create a copy of the email with the email ID in. And again, you might want to put something more meaningful from, from the subject or the from. Um, so I've double clicked on that file now, and that's the copy of the email. And you can see it had uh, three attachments in it and, and, a, um, and also an image in the uh, signature. And then it's gone through each of the attachments and created a copy of each attachment here and here. And it also treats any image in the signature as an attachment. So it's actually four attachments and saved it there.
And so there we have it. Useful uh, function that has um, many purposes for probably wider um, processes than I'm showing here. Um, but you can get play around with that and get more complicated um, and hopefully create something that's of use. And I hope you found this useful. Thank you.